Hello again, folks. Excuse the voice. I'm suffering from a bout of man flu, and it's hit me pretty hard. And remember, women, a cold hits men far harder than it hits you. We are literally dying when we get a cold, and it's no lie, and it's no joke. Anyway, <laughs> on with the video. So who's in charge of this country, then? It's not the people, that's for sure. This isn't really a democratic country, per se. All right, we have our elections, etc., every four years. But in the past 10, we've had like four prime ministers. One jumped ship because Brexit happened and he didn't expect it to. Theresa May, she, uh, she was booted out because she couldn't deliver Brexit or she didn't want to deliver Brexit. Boris Johnson was kicked out of Downing Street because he had a bit of birthday cake. And the Conservative Party, they bowed to public pressure. And now we've got Liz Truss. And all right, although it seems like Liz Truss doesn't have much going on between her ears... And when she does an interview, she looks quite vacant. She has literally been in the job less than two months. And I think she should be given time to learn from her mistakes. Remember, when Barack Obama was elected president in the United States, the lefties were all going, oh, just give him a chance. And they did. The US gave him a chance and they found out that all he was being good at was being an orator. The guy is clearly a gifted speaker. And even I like listening to him speak, though I disagree with his policies and what he did. But he didn't break the mould. And he was given two terms, but he did nothing. Apart from pushing agendas, ideology and a rhetoric that divided a nation, divided two races yet again. So anyway, back to Liz Truss. Now, I'm no fan of the Tories. I don't think I will ever vote for the Conservative Party ever again, because they just can't sort their own house out. So, call me old-fashioned, but I thought the Prime Minister was in charge of running things in this country. The Prime Minister is leader of the party which they represent, and what they say goes. The buck stops with them. They are the big cheese, the big boss, the A number one, because simply the people voted them in democratically. Now, I know Liz Truss wasn't voted in a democratic election. She was voted in by Tory party members, which represents less than like 1% of the British population. And I know that seems unfair, but that's the way the system works currently. And the lefties on Twitter, the hate mob, they're always going on about this, saying, oh, we didn't elect her, the country didn't vote her in, yet they didn't say anything about Gordon Brown taking the job from Tony Blair, thinking it was his God-given right. Nobody voted him in. There wasn't a general election when Tony Blair stepped down. And they didn't even ask the Labour Party members. He got that job, and he did that job really badly, thanks to making a deal with Tony Blair in a restaurant in London somewhere. Nobody voted for him, nobody asked for him, nobody wanted him, because nobody liked him. Gordon Brown was just simply unlikable and really unsuitable to be Prime Minister, and he showed it. The guy was a fucking disaster. And if you don't believe me, then simply ask the poor people whose pensions he fucked up. Not to mention the fact that this guy sold Britain's gold reserves at rock-bottom prices just before the prices shot up. The guy had no clue, and nobody voted him in. But at least Liz Truss was voted in. Now, I'm making this video because I have learned online and on the mainstream media that um, the head of the 1922 committee has just walked into Downing Street in an unplanned meeting with the Prime Minister Liz Truss. Now, this is usually bad news because the 1922 committee is like the union for the Tories, which is ironic because the Tories don't like unions. And yet here they are with their very own one. And I bet they didn't think their centenary year would be going like this, did they? So anyway, the head of the 1922 committee has uh, gone into Downing Street. He's having a meeting with Liz Truss. And I am guessing that this is because a number of Tory MPs who are visibly angry at the Prime Minister on television interviews are telling them, well, we've got no confidence in her. You know, we're giving in a letter saying we have no confidence in Liz Truss. We want her out and we want her out now. And so it looks like the writing's on the wall. And I've said to you in a previous video, she won't leave until early November at least, because then she is entitled to a 115,000 yearly pension for the rest of her life simply because she was Prime Minister. And she will be the sixth Prime Minister to get it as well. And again, I did mention as well in a previous video that Margaret Thatcher, in the same time, she was on the ropes in the early years of her premiership. 
the party was on the verge of giving letters to the 1922 committee telling them they had no uh, confidence in her either. And then the Falklands War happened. She went in there, grabbed the bull by the horns and won it. And the rest is history. She won the next few general elections and secured her place as one of Britain's great prime ministers. Now, I'm not saying Liz Truss needs a war to win uh, to keep her job. So what could she do? What could happen to save her? Well, there are a few things she could do to save her job. Now, I made a poll the other day about fracking here in the UK. And I think the views on that in this country is like 50-50. It's a good thing and it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing because of environmental consequences, well, possible environmental consequences. But it would certainly help with the economy, i.e. give people jobs and be a short-term, cheaper fuel solution to the cost of living crisis. Now, I say short-term because, again, fracking is like 50-50. It is not perfect, it does have its bad bits as well as its benefits. So short term, until Britain sets up, uh, you know, clean nuclear solutions when it comes to energy. So she needs to start with the fracking, and Labour, by the way, were defeated in the Houses of Parliament recently when they tried to scupper that plan. So she could now get on with that and, um, and help people greatly. And while that's happening, build a few nuclear power stations. The next thing she could do is recruit more police officers. Police officers based on merit rather than box ticking. Because political correctness, woke ideologies have ripped through the police service in this country like a cancer. They are recruiting the wrong people, I believe. They are recruiting too many people, too many young people from colleges and universities with little or no life experience. And then recruit heavily from the British Armed Forces. Men and women who have already given their lives to serving this country and are prepared to serve this country in a different way. Men and women who command respect and fear at the same time. Men and women who want to look after people, their property, are not scared of chasing down and uh, bending up criminals like deck chairs. That's the sort of people we need in the police service and Liz Trust can do this. So a recruitment drive and the British mob is the perfect place to recruit. Next thing she could do to save herself and, uh, you know, make herself look good in the public eye is to just keep out of Ukraine, stop funding Zelensky to the tune of billions, stop sending weapons and just take a neutral stance. It is utterly unfair on the British taxpayer, the people in this country who work hard, who put food on the table for the families and a roof over their heads, that we are all being squeezed hard financially to fund something that has absolutely nothing to do with us. And then, of course, there's the disastrous transport system here in the UK. Private train companies are raising train fares while delivering inadequate service. And this is because train companies, private train companies, are greedy. Now, I know what nationalisation did to the UK back in the 70s, and it took Margaret Thatcher to, uh, to save the country in that regard. Like she said, the medicine was harsh, but the patient required it. But this is a different time. I think there are a few services in this country that need nationalisation because the owners, the companies who run them, are just too greedy. Take gas and electricity, for example. It is easy for them to blame the situation in the Ukraine to make profits go through the roof, to raise prices. And if these prices are going to give a better service, then, you know, that's a lie because they're giving their stockholders, their shareholders, billions in payouts. And it is ridiculously unfair so either nationalise all these, uh, these main energy and transport companies or at the very least impose draconian and strict measures that sting these companies every time they step out of line. There's also the question of Nicola Sturgeon, we Jimmy Cranky up in Scotland. She needs to be put back in her box. So Liz Truss could finally uh, go up there and have a one-to-one -one and tell her. Listen, we gave you, Scots, a independence referendum recently. You voted to stay in, and that's that. You listen to your people, listen to the people who voted you in, because this is clearly a personal endeavour for you, so you can put any dreams of independence referendums to bed. And if you can't deal with that, then resign. Remember, you're a first minister, not a prime minister. You're not important, and I don't answer to you. 
And lastly, there's the issue of the Conservative Party. They are no good to man or beast. And they're not true conservatives. They are literally liberals in, uh, in blue ties. There's nothing conservative about them at all. They are just wealthy socialists who enjoy the lifestyle that their job affords them. So, you know, if uh, Sir Graham Brady does tell her, listen, uh, the 1922 committee and the Tory party don't want you as prime minister anymore, then I would call for a general election as soon as possible and take everyone down with her. It'll destroy the Conservative Party and it's probably what it's going to take to make them reform. So all this trust has to do is implement policies that make the lives of the people of this island better and do away with political correctness, and that's it. But she won't. Her hands are tied by a parliamentary system that takes away power from the people, from the voters, and the 1922 committee. But she has neither the strength nor the support to do so. And so it makes you wonder, doesn't it, who really is in charge of, uh, of this country? Because it's certainly not the people. Anyway, that's what I think. Let me know what you think in the comments. And if that 1922 committee meeting with uh, Liz Truss is over by the time this video comes out, then <laughs> I was wrong, wasn't I? Hey ho, I'm only human. There you go. Opinions are just opinions. And everyone is allowed to. Right, that's it. Until my next video, take care of yourselves. Have a great day. And Roger Trout.